of chaos behind the scenes as the government kept changing requirements for the health care website and reports that experts building the site were begging for a delay in its launch. A small-scale test crashed the system just days before launch. And our next guest says that that failure proves the website was broken and the administration knew it but decided to go ahead and launch anyway. John McCormick is a staff writer for the Weekly Standard who's been taking a look at all of this. We just heard in that report from Molly Henneberg, we heard uh, Jay Carney, the White House spokesman, saying the best minds are being applied to repair the damage. Why weren't the best minds called in in the first place to get this thing launched? Well, there are a lot of unanswered questions. You know, the administration had three and a half years since this law was passed. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars on a website, and it's not suffering. Just simply a few glitches or a few kinks. The website's broken, and that's three weeks after uh, the website was supposed to go live. Today, as, as you noted, the Washington Post reported that a few hundred people was all it took to crash the website days before it went live. So the administration knew they've been saying that it's been overwhelming demand, this crushing volume of interest, and the website is what's taken it down. But we know it's not millions, it's not even hundreds of thousands or thousands. A few hundred people simply crashed the website days before, but the administration decided to go ahead anyway. The big question now is why. Right, and the, and the idea was that they wanted to build a website that would allow 50 to 60,000 people at a time to get on and enroll. They did this demo and a couple of hundred people got on and crashed it. Exactly. And they knew from, from previous programs, Medicare Part D, the prescription drug program, that the kind of volume that they should have expected. And it simply failed a very minor test. Uh, the question is, why, why exactly didn't they take that delay that Republicans were offering? I think that no one really expected we'd be here debating whether or not the government could get a website to work after hundreds of millions of dollars in three years. I think people thought we'd be debating the merits of the law, but right now we're simply debating whether or not people can get online and, and buy this product. I want to put on screen for our viewers one of the requirements of the Affordable Care Act. And, you know, this is the thing that the Supreme Court said is legal and constitutional that Americans must have or buy health insurance by the 15th of February, or they have to pay either a $95 fine or 1% of their income, whichever is greater. Now, you've got a website that doesn't work. Uh, these people are supposed to have this in place within the next few months. What if they can't buy it? Well, exactly. Congressional Republicans have been hammering the administration hard on this. How exactly can you expect people to, buy, to pay a fine for a product they can't even go on the website to buy? I think that that's a real problem. There's question of whether or not the administration will just unilaterally uh, delay this if it has to at some point. Uh, but it also gets to really deeper problems with the law. If, if people can't sign up for this website, the people most likely to take extraordinary measures to, get, to make phone calls, to fax in forms, to send it in the mail, those are people who are going to be the sickest and who are going to have the most expensive health care costs. And to we, make this whole thing... Well, we've also heard, I mean, there are you know, some number of hundreds, maybe thousands of people who've signed up from the website, but there are also thousands of people who have lost their private health insurance policies because they don't... Comp uh, they don't uh, comport with the requirements of Obamacare. Exactly. Once we get past all these technical questions, uh, the president's still going to have to answer all these broken promises that people were told they could keep their health insurance that they liked. That we've got reports of hundreds of thousands of Americans losing their health insurance because it doesn't comply with the requirements of the Affordable Care Act. We've also got many, many reports right now of people seeing their their premiums skyrocket by as much as ten thousand dollars a year for a family of four in some cases. We don't have data for the entire country yet, but the anecdotes aren't encouraging for a lot of people. John, you look like a relatively young and healthy guy. I'm just guessing. I don't know your medical history, but uh, you say that there is the potential of a death spiral here if young and healthy people don't like what they're getting from Obamacare and don't sign up. The administration says that they think 7 million people are going to sign up for the website and for, or for the health insurance. And for this thing to work, you need about 2.7 million young and healthy people. And that's a big question. If people, if people who haven't had insurance already can't even get online to buy this thing, are enough of them going to buy it? Or is it just going to people who really, really need it? In which case, insurance will just skyrocket through the roof. And, and who's going to buy it then? Yeah, well, a lot of questions yet to be answered. We'll see what happens. We're certainly going to be keeping our eye on it. John, McCorm John McCormick from the Weekly Standard. John, thank you. Thank you. I like Dr. John Scott on set diet.